I hate videos. Now you may be wondering, if I hate videos, what the heck am I doing here? Happy Friday. It is Friday, June 23rd. And I get to spend some time with all of you. I'm so excited. So if you are watching live, please drop us a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Inga van Roy, and I am recognized as a connection catalyst. I help entrepreneurs develop a strategy so that they can stand out and connect with the ideal community. Today, it is my privilege and honor to be able to welcome someone that is, is part of my LinkedIn community. And she, will, she and I will be chatting a little bit about her journey and, and what she's encountered and experienced in her life, as well as her networking journey. Um, <clears throat> yes, her name is Leanne Lander. Um, before we jump into that, let me say thank you so much to our sponsors at Africa Online Radio. Um, this is the place where we bring you only the very best in local and international music. It is your oasis of entertainment, your cup survive, as we say in Afrikaans. And it is the same place where I go live every Wednesday and I present my Wonder Women Wednesday segment. If you haven't caught that live yet, you are missing out. So please come on over and join me on radio. Listen to me on radio on Africa online radio station. I will display the banner in the bottom of your screen. So it is africa.co.za. And my show is every Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Africa Online Radio is a community radio station based in South Africa, but with a worldwide reach. And if you would like to advertise your business on this radio station and also its social media platforms, please reach out to us at info at Once again, info at Africa co.za as i said it is a south african community radio station with a worldwide reach and we have sister stations in canada as well as new zealand um africa online radio station if you have been watching my intro video you will have seen a word that is not very well known to the Western world. And that word is Ubuntu. So then you may be wondering, what does Ubuntu mean? Let me show you. Ubuntu is an ancient African word and it's like me because we both have roots in South Africa and it means humanity to others. It is often described as reminding us that I am because we are. And the reason why I believe in this concept so wholeheartedly is because the person who you see sitting before you today would not be here had it not been for the people that I have encountered in my life. And so without further ado, let me welcome Leanne Lander to the stream. 
Good morning, Leanne. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Um, won't you please introduce yourself um, and let people know who you are and what you do? Well, I am, um, first and foremost, I'm a mother of two wonderful girls, and I spent a lot of time um, in my life working in supply chain management, and then I just was missing creativity in my life, and I kind of just took this big U-turn and, and started uh, creating art, and now I'm a full-time artist. Wow. Supply chain management, you said, well, some of my, the people that are in my community are based in manufacturing. <laughs> I know so, that works well. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a whole other world, honestly. Um, many of us also participate in um, a chat on Twitter every Thursday, which is called the USA Manufacturing Hour chat. Hmm. Um, I should I should bring you over sometime. Um, it's a whole heap of fun, to be honest with you. Yeah, so, logistics is a, an interesting world, that's for sure. Something new every day. <laughs> yes, right. So welcome. Thank you for being here with us. Um, let's go over to the comments. There aren't many people online today, and I know that uh, many other kids are on vacation from school, so maybe people are off as well. Um, let's say hello to Eliana. She says, good morning. I have you on speakerphone this morning. Although I am a CEO and founder, I still clean my own house. Honestly, Eliana, so do we. I'm sure, I'm sure um, Leanne is in the same boat <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also still clean my ho my own house. Um, I think my mother would have a conniption if I didn't, <laughs> if I had somebody else. You know, um, I come from a background where if I'm going to hire someone to clean my house, I'll probably clean it before they come. <laughs> yes, I have done that a few times myself, actually, when we did have some help, when things got really, really crazy, yeah. I do that too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So um, I see some people are popping in. And by the way, guys, um, Leanne shared with us that she comes from a background of supply chain management. Um, so that would be interesting to you guys. I see the people popping in. So Katie says, hey, everyone, and happy Friday. Oh my gosh. She says, who's in this swimsuit ready to jump in? Not me. <laughs> It's a um it's an it's an ongoing joke on my show about what are we wearing underneath what we're wearing, what we see. <laughs> oh, and uh Katie says, let me see that necklace, Inga. It's um it's hand beaded from South Africa, Katie. And it comes with a bracelet too. So it these come in different colors, by the way. And Katie says, hello, Leanne. Thanks for taking time to chat with us. Also, I want to see the bright and beautiful paintings behind you. <laughs> um, Katie, Katie also paints. So, and I knew that she would be interested in that. Would you, um, I should have asked you before, but would you be so kind as to uh, give us a, a tour of the paintings a little bit later in the conversation? Oh, sure. Yeah. Would you want to do it now? It's up to you. Your choice, your show. <laughs> okay, let's let's first go through the comments and then we'll see. So Katie's saying hashtag USA Manufacturing Hour. And she says, <laughs> a whole heap of fun. Did you hear that Kirsten Austin? So Kirsten is um, one of the hosts for, this, for the chat. And we have <laughs> Megan. Hello, Megan. She says, hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Megan. Um, also hosts a show and her show is called Mavens of Manufacturing. Oh, so wow. she she highlights um, women um, that are in the manufacturing sector. Very cool. Very cool. Honestly, it's so, you know, um, you and I spoke about this before we came on um, where I said that, you know, representation matters and 
Megan is also a firm believer in that, and that's why she does a show. Yeah, it's super cool. There's so many amazing women, you know, coming up through, um, you know, some unexpected places, logistics. I just met a young woman who wants to be a, a welder. She's just oh, wow. still in high school, and I was just super excited about that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. You know what's so weird is I didn't even know you had this connection with logistics and supply chain <laughs> management. So that's really – talk about divine appointments. It's so yeah. strange. <laughs> And you know what I love also, um, just to tag on to what, what we were saying about Megan, what I love about what she does is she also does outreach in schools, helping, mm. helping kids see that there are options for them in the manufacturing sector. So, so great, so important right now. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, something that's really important is women empowerment since we're all women here I, I i haven't scrolled down so if there are any guys in here i apologize um but you know women empowerment is definitely something that is so important and close to my heart and um you know you and i oh leanne is blacking out um i it's okay i think probably you got a phone call is that right uh, sorry did you, did you get a call because I you're did, it's I okay need to turn off notifications or something. I guess. What are the chances? I don't know. It's okay. Um, your the, this happens when your your phone doesn't ring all day, and then it will when you when you're busy doing something. Of course, it's okay. Um, I was just gonna say that you know why it's so important. Also, is you and I are both girl moms. We're both raising girls, and it's important for our girls to be able to see that there are options for them beyond those restrictions that were once in place. Absolutely. So, um, okay, let's see who else. Hello to you, Whitney Koch. She says, good morning from Katy, Texas. And I love to see there's networking in the comments. Um, everyone saying hello to each other. Kristen says, good afternoon, everyone. Katy, I wasn't going to read this, but I need to. I want to read it. She says, hello, Ileana. Good morning and happy cleaning. I clean my own house so that I can bless it. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you. And Whitney says hello to all of us. Thank you for being here, Whitney. And we have um, Laura Molando, the stress commando, saying happy Friday, everyone. This is my eight-year-old sneaking into my room <laughs> because she is ill today. Oh, oh and no. ill from school. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Then I see some, some greeting in the comments. Nice to see everybody here. And we have Thampiran. Thank you for tuning in. He says, hi, very nice, beautiful, and God bless you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Ileana says she loves my the hanging shoulder look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Megan says, I have so many people I can connect with. So many women welders. Wow. That's awesome. That is That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so if I I'm sure you and Megan are not connected, so please connect with her and well, mm -hmm. after the show and um, you can connect that young lady with her as well. Yeah. Um, Katie, hold on. Did I miss something? Oh. <laughs> okay, so Whitney saying, Katie, how did I not know that you painted? Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. <laughs> did I let the cat out of the bag? You, you're very talented, she says. I don't tell many people I'm shy about it. I don't have the guts to share. Mm. You're very talented. Your art is beautiful. It really but is. That brings up an interesting point is when I yes. when I got into art, I did not realize how much courage it took. So yeah. it it is a strange um, revelation to try, you know, make yourself be brave and put yourself yeah. out there. 
It really is. So we'll get through the comments and then you can maybe walk us through some of your paintings, please. Sure. Um, Jonathan says, happy Friday. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. Nice to see you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, oh, Katie says, yes, we are manufacturing's biggest fans. Russ Hedge also loves manufacturing, yes. Russ is our friend and we often joke about this. Um, but yes, we are. And Katie is actually known as the manufacturing hype girl. Um, oh, I love that. Oh, yes. that's great. And thank you, Whitney. Um, I hope she feels better too, so she can stop coughing. Oh my gosh, this the I think the um, the bug that's going around is just it's such a lingering thing. You, it's difficult to get rid of. Mm. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> sorry. Like I was like, who the heck is opening my door? <laughs> Katie says the look I just gave her. Oh my gosh. Um, and yes, you should connect with Megan. And Laura says, Oh, hope your hope your daughter has complete healing. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate you. So, Leanne, I'm going to put you on single view so that you can show um show us some of your paintings. Please go ahead. Okay, let's see here. All right, so let me see the best way to do this. I don't know how to turn my camera around necessarily in this mode. So I think it's fine if you just put it like, yeah, if you just show right us there. something. Okay, let me see here. So I have a lot of different styles of paintings and sculptures. And as you can see, this one here is actually 3D and it has some 3D components to it. Wow, it's elements. beautiful. Um, and then let's see all very uh, this is alcohol inks and it's a very fluid wow. kind of medium when i do this kind of work it's very fluid and i use a hair dryer and there's no control over what i'm doing so it's kind of just oh, like wow. good luck <laughs> yeah. wow it's beautiful though this is actually um a multi-step process where i i put alcohol inks into resin and then I um, it does something organic but it's very very small so what I do is I use macro photography to go in and take a photo then of the uh, alcohol ink in the resin after it dries and wow. then I magnify and I blow up the tiny details into what you see here so wow just amazing detail of 3D and very cool looking stuff. Same with this, this, this is, is the same process here. Wow. So I've combined my art with photography and that's this is the outcome of that one. Wow. Um, more alcohol inks. And then here's another one. Now this, this is a really interesting one. This is that same process I talked about with the um, alcohol inks in resin and then taking a photo and, and magnifying it. But this actually has um, some virtual component to it. it I, through networking, I met a woman from the Netherlands who was a um, virtual reality animator. So she took this piece and when people view this piece in various places because I've made prints of this, they can download an app called Art Aviv and then they view the art through their camera using the Art of Vive app and it comes to life. And it like things, like there's a big surprise in there, things happen. She animated wow. fish and like fish swimming all throughout it. It's, it just became something super cool collaboration wise. It was awesome. Wow, I can, is that the same one that's on your website as well? Um, yes. I've, I've seen it, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Super cool. It's really cool. And then I got into um, some sculptural stuff here lately. So mm -hmm. this is really weird and funky. Um, sorry, really the cool. camera is like it's left. Fine. It's not 
the way that I think it should move. So it's okay. Um, there we go. Kind of. You can see that it's. Where am I moving? It's because it's so it's um it's not mirroring your camera. Yeah. So what you think is left and um what you think what you think is left is actually right and the opposite. So. And I have a real struggle with that. <laughs> but so. it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. And then I just started doing installations. So I'm working on this large piece wow. here. Uh, so I'm into all kinds of things. I'm yeah. Kind of all over the place. That's so cool. And there's this one too. I love that. Um, what? Wow. I love those. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing it with us. Oh, you're um, Katie says, oh my gosh, I am in love with so many already. <laughs> um, and Laura says, stunning work. And oh, she says, you. wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Katie says, I am a mixed multimedia fan. I love inks and watercolor, but never got brave enough to use liquid pores. I know, right? I am shocked that you have manipulated that with so many medias. It's beautiful. And Whitney says, stunning. Katie says, wait, was that a 3D printed piece? The colorful one? I think the last one that you showed that you that you showed us. It is not 3D printed, but interestingly enough, so what I do um, is I use, it's called a UPO paper, it's synthetic plastic paper. And then I use a, a soldering iron and I cut intricate patterns all through this stuff and then it becomes it, it it just becomes something very organic and then it's all like puzzle pieces I put them on top of each other and arrange them in certain ways so that they they look almost like coral but they also kind of look like metal and it's it's lightweight it's it's a really fascinating material I'm super excited about and that's why this installation hanging up here it's super lightweight. I can make a humongous installation. And if I color it with uh, metallic paint, it will look like metal hanging up there. And it wow. will be, literally, you can lift it with your finger, which is wow. a really interesting application for large installation pieces that I'm trying to work towards someday. That's pretty but cool. To circle back to the 3D question, which is really interesting. My nephew is, um, is one of the... I don't know. He's, he's becoming kind of an expert in 3D printing. He's kind of, he's gone through the whole program and um, he's got his master's degree and he's working in a 3D facility. And I have approached him recently to see if there's any way that we could collaborate potentially for these larger installations, kind of um, using some of my pieces, but some of the 3D printed pieces, perhaps. So I'm excited where that might go. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Katie says, you are my new favorite artist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Laura says, thank you so much for sharing your work. Yes, thank you for sharing with us. Oh, thank um, you for the opportunity to share it. It's my pleasure. Katie says also absolutely amazing. I agree. I, um, I remember when you and I had a call and you showed me, you showed me some of your art. It's pretty cool. It's really, you know, um, for me, so I've, I've never painted. This piece behind me is done by my husband and um, everything else that's in my home. Um, but I feel like it takes a certain amount of bravery to actually do it. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I don't think I have that. I don't know. Like, mm, um, I'll do something else. Don't get me wrong, like I am brave in certain aspects, but art just, I, it feels like it's too much outside of my control, if that yeah. makes any sense. <laughs> oh, absolutely. In fact, um, I teach classes specifically for that reason, to help adults, basically unadult, and remember yeah. how wildly creative we all are when we let loose. But some yeah. people have such a hard time with it and it's become one of my missions is to help people um, connect with different mediums and just 
just give it a shot because what's the worst that can happen? You, mm -hmm. you might have to throw something away or start over. It's um, the intimidation of that blank canvas yeah. and starting from nothing and, and just trying to create something from your soul that, you know, how do you do that? Some people just has that, have that really hard time starting. So um, I love helping people walk through that challenge and light a fire within them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's jump into the questions, please. Uh, can you tell us what inspires you, Leanne? So I get really geeky about, um, like, there's this intersection of nature, science, physics, um, and art. I love the intersection of that, um, of those three things together. Why? Because I feel like that's what connects us all. It's this interconnectivity of the, nat the natural world and how science works and these repeating patterns in the world. And if we take time to notice, um, there's so much nature in art that everything I do is pretty much inspired by it, even though it may not look like it because I'm really, um, I love microbiology and I love looking at things um, in different perspectives and, and really small on a small scale. Mm -hmm. um, and that just really gets me excited. I don't, I don't know why, because I feel like um, these things are also, you know, these repeating patterns, you see it in coral reef, you, but you also see it in our brains, our neurology and, and the way that we are knitted together is very similar to the way the natural world is knitted together. Um, the mycelium oh. with, with mushrooms and, and all that kind of stuff. We are all connected and you can see hints of all of these little I guess it's like a little love story that, you know, by the creator that brings mm. us all together. Mm. Um, so I know that you're also a photographer. Do you, do you take pictures of that? So I do. And my favorite kind of photography is really that macro photography. I get in super close. Like um, my favorite thing to do is to, take a picture of something so wildly beautiful, like a dewdrop on a piece of grass. I mean, it's something we can, we all have access to and we see all the time. It's right under our feet, right out our front doors. And we don't take time to look at that. And you, you know, when I, when I focus in and I get really close to this and you see the stunning beauty right in front of you every day, it changes your perspective. And so I love to do that. My favorite thing is to, show this stunning photo, but then I also show the zoom out and what it looks like as I just walk by it every day. So people can see like, wow, I would have never even seen that. So it, it requires humility. It requires you to slow down. Mm. It requires you to get really low and kind of look like an idiot because you're down in your yard, like on your hands and knees looking really weird. And it just, it requires you to look at the world in a whole different way. And it's changed my outlook drastically. I bet it also, um, it helps you feel more gratitude, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so when you were a child, who was your role model and why? Yeah. So, my role model was my big brother. He was eight years older than me and, you know, he could just do anything. He was so capable. But I think the thing that really um, made me, you know, revere him the most was how kind he was. He took time. He taught me all the things, you know, my parents are really busy and doing their own things. So he's the one who taught me how to like throw a football. He taught me how to, um, you know, all the things you're supposed to do in life and have fun with, and he'd play with me. And, um, but he also taught me how to drive and all the things, you know, so he was always just so kind and patient and that That's was beautiful. impressive. That's beautiful. Um, so I, uh, I know, like I tell people this all the time, so I'll just, I'll make it brief, but so before I started doing live shows or, my own or even being interviewed, 
Um, it took me a long time to get to the point where I was comfortable doing it. And um, somebody invited me to be on their show. And I think I it took me about three months to say yes. He would just keep coming back and saying, have you thought about it enough? Like, how do you feel about it? I, I really want you to come on my show. And I just kept saying, not yet. I'm not ready yet. Um, but when I said yes, he provided me with a set of questions. And one question really made me think because um, I had never really established that part of me. Um, and that is, what is your life statement? Mm. So it made me think about what kind of legacy I want to leave behind. Um, and then I developed my life statement um, because I've always been about people. I loved people, like since I was a young girl. Um, so I just, I really had to think about like, what is it that encompasses that and brings it forward into the adult that I want to be, not mm -hmm. just that I am. Um, so I developed my life statement, which is to positively impact the lives of others. Um, and, you know, some people call it a motto, some people call it a life statement. Um, what is yours? Yeah, this was a good one. So I do appreciate this question. And I agree that this, this took some thought. Um, and I believe the simpler is the better. So what I, I came to is find or create beauty where you are. Oh, wow. It's, it's what I love to do. And it's what I like to help other people do. Wow, wow. I love that. Find yeah, really where you are. The the biggest compliments I've ever gotten is when I started on my macro photography journey and I started sharing it. I did it. I did it because I was frustrated and I I was really felt like angry being stuck in Ohio. I'm in Ohio. It's it's not like Costa Rica or Hawaii or somewhere really beautiful. It's the Midwest and. I was struggling finding beauty. And so I, it, this whole thing started by a challenge to myself to go find beauty right where I was because I didn't think I was going to find it. And I did. And, and then I shared it. And it started getting wildly beautiful. Like it became this like scavenger hunt. And now I'm almost distracted by all the beauty that I find. But Long story short, um, when I started sharing these things, other people were also fascinated because they also had never really taken the time to see ice crystals up close and the structures and the breathtaking beauty of it all. And so other people started doing it and sending me their pictures and posting them. And that's when I knew there was something that clicked at that moment. And, and that's why this is my mission, because when they started doing that and they also said, thank you for helping me see the world in a different way. And it hits me like a ton of bricks every time I hear that. That's the best compliment I could ever get. Wow. Wow, that actually makes me emotional. Um, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Um, and I want to make sure that I find and create beauty where I am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what is your take on networking? How do you approach it? So <clears throat> I uh, was really nervous about networking. I did not know what I was doing. So um, I joined a group and I was just lucky enough to join a really great group uh, by, led by Chris Borja over here. And he, his approach is really wonderful. And he taught me that it just widens your net, you know, um, listen more than talk. And you're really there just to make connections and meet people, not sell yourself, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, wow. I love that. Um, and it reminds me of something that my mom taught me when I was when I was a girl. Uh, that says, "You have two ears and one mouth, so you need to mm -hmm. listen twice as much as you speak." Yeah, and it's true. 
um, it's true you need to give people an audience and, you know, allow them that space to express themselves too. Yeah, because um, speaking of quotes, another thing that has hit me hard, because I love that one, and I also love people remember how they made you feel, not what you told them, you know. So I always go into it. Sometimes in networking meetings, I'll walk away and I have never even got to talk about any of myself, like what I do or anything like, and, and those are sometimes the best ones because I just feel so filled up because yeah. I heard people out. I just let them talk and ramble, you know, and it's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> this is um, the quote that you're referring to. It's by Maya Angelou. And she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's a favorite of mine and Whitney's, who's in the comment as well. Yeah, that's it's a very powerful quote. Yes. Right? Um, because you need to, we need to think about how we make people feel. We need to remember that when we do interact with them too. Sorry. Um, okay, let me ask you another question. Um, how has networking impacted you? Um, you know, I've met some of my favorite people through networking. I've built some really wonderful relationships and, you know, that, that has been, I think the greatest surprise. Cause you know, when you first go into networking, at least when I was first starting, I thought, well, this is just this scary thing where you go in and try to tell people what you do. And, you know, it, it's just the whole paradigm shifted when, you know, I started just changing how I'm approaching with it and listening and all that kind of stuff we were just talking about. But the really cool thing is I've just made some terrific friends that I try to always leverage um, whatever I need in my life. Like I'll go to my networking group first and, you know, I need, I don't know, some service in my house or I need some um, cake decorated or, you know, whatever it is you're needing, you know, I always try to go to my network first, you know? And so that's kind of how it's, it works over time. It, I may not need that cake right when I meet them, you know, like, so when you're networking, you got to think of this long, long-term yeah. marathon, not this, yeah. you know, cause uh, those kinds of things you need, you need each other at some point. Or they know somebody. And the other interesting thing is like, if they're not the right person, well, I know someone who knows someone, you know, and I love that, um, how it just widens your reach into the world. Yes, it absolutely does. Absolutely. Um, and I love that you do. So I don't do a lot of in-person networking. Um, in fact, like the first time that I went, that I went to a networking event, um, in person, I was so nervous. It's weird. It's intimidating. <laughs> like, yeah, like I I do networking online all the time, but when I had to go to this in person event, I promise you, like I stood outside because I was waiting for a friend. He said that he was going to meet me there, so I was waiting for him. Right, he just had an appointment before, so I stood outside and I waited for him to come first and I decided okay like this is the ideal time for me to make a phone call so I was on the phone with a, with somebody else and just standing outside waiting for my friend to come and then I received a message from him saying I'm sorry I won't be able to make it <laughs> and I thought oh my gosh <laughs> like so I have to I have to go in here by myself I have mm -hmm. to um, because I also, I, I don't get me wrong. I contemplated just leaving. Yep. I did. I did. And you know, <laughs> the, the, the guilt, because, um, at that point my daughter was, wasn't well and my husband was home with her and he was saying to her, you know, and be, especially because I wasn't there. If I was there, he would be more actively involved in his work day, etc. So now I had basically, I felt guilty that 
I'd left her with him. And here I was at a networking event and I wasn't going inside. So that's what made me go. <laughs> guilt, guilt made you go. <laughs> it did. Because I, I was, when my friend said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I was like, I was ready to say, okay, I guess I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I stayed and I went in. Um, and I met some people that um, actually opened up doors for me for an opportunity to speak and then as a result of that opportunity I had another opportunity to speak so you know there's always a reason and we just need to trust that we're in the right place at the right time absolutely um, you know, yes doing those in-person networking things I I also experienced extreme anxiety like I actually did walk away from a few of them I just couldn't do yeah. it but once I shifted my perspective to it's not all about me and it's really, I'm, I'm excited to just hear other people's stories. That takes all of the fear yes. Yes. and it changes the whole story because now you're just going in and you're in there as a curious person, like, Hey, what do you do? Yeah. And that way, no pressure on you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I actually, so here's something on Wednesday, I had a show. And Whitney, that's in the comments right now, she was also in the comments on during that show. And, and my guest is also from the area that she's in. So I said to them, you guys need to connect, you know. And, and then my guest actually spoke about um, she has built a community. She does in-person events. Um, like it's pretty often, I think, at least once a month. And so they, when they were like connecting and, and they were saying that they would get together, I thought, I was like, oh, I'm so jealous. And I told, I told my guests, I said, I feel so jealous because now I know you guys are going to get together. You're going to connect with each other. Um, and probably more than likely she will go to the event that my, that my host, my guest host as well. Yeah. And. And I said, I'm so, I feel so jealous. And she said, you know what? My guest said to me, you know what, Inga, you shouldn't be. You should actually create this opportunity for you in your, yeah. in your area. Um, well, I was so inspired that I actually scheduled um, an in-person meetup on Sunday. This Sunday? Yes, this Sunday. Oh, my gosh. I'm so proud of you. Way to go to Thank be you. brave. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I was feeling brave at the time. Um, we'll see how I feel on Sunday morning. But anyway, <laughs> um, and then I'm also hosting. And by the way, everybody that's watching, I'm hosting an online meetup. Um, so if anyone would like to attend, it's on Monday, this coming Monday, the 26th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please reach out. Um, I'd love for you to be there. And Leanne, if you're able to, please do come. Um, I can send you an invitation. Yeah, send me. I was writing that down, but that would be great if you could send it to me. Perfect. I will. I will. Um, okay. Do you, how do you leverage LinkedIn, uh, a platform such as this or networking groups? Do you have, do you, I know some people have a specific approach, like how they do it. What do you do? For LinkedIn, I do not utilize it as much as I should. Um, I use I used to kind of be a little more active, um, but I, you know, I'll post things now and then and what I'm doing. Um, I I follow my friends. I mean, I I use it right now more following other people and seeing what they're doing. I'm not posting as actively as I used to. Mm. Um, just because I feel like I'm taking a break and I think that's okay. I yes. can get overdone and overstimulated. And um, I had a huge show, solo shows last year, two really big ones. And it was a lot of work. And I was advertising about that and posting about it a lot. And I just kind of got a little overdone on it. And so I'm taking a little break and I feel like that's okay. I'm not fearful about it. I know that I'll get back into the game of posting, but for now, I just enjoy seeing what other people are doing. I'm mean, so inspired to see other people just continuing on and doing like you. And for instance, you're just, 
you show up so consistently and that is so impressive because I know that's very, very hard work. And so um, I just, I'm silently watching people right now and being inspired. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and yes, you're right. It is, it, it's important to give yourself grace. Um, just like we show grace to others, we need to do it for ourselves too. Um, and yes, it is hard work. Uh, I had I had gone through a period of burnout actually last year where I just, I was so uninspired. My well was completely dry. Um, and, but you know, now I just, I realized that I just, I need to just get up and, and move forward. And if I can't post today, that's okay. Just move forward and show myself grace. Because yeah. other times I would have beat myself up about it. But yeah, that's yeah. what I have to do, right? You know, some days we're the doers and some days we're the observers. And yeah. um, and I've also learned in my field here with art, there are there truly there are hibernation periods. And the first time I went through a hibernation period, I, I call them that now. I didn't know what to call them before. You can call it what you will. Um, it's basically just uh, what do you call it? Writers have writer's block, artists have artist block. And we also have these moments of pouring ourselves out. And then we have these moments of having to restore. Yes. And I didn't know that before, you know? And so now when I hit a hibernation period, I, I embrace it because I know what comes from a hibernation period. This period of rest is just like when you look at these trees that over winter, they look like they're dead. There are no leaves on them, but there's a beauty to them that is striking without their leaves. It's they're very vulnerable. They're very bare, but yes. there's so much work going on underneath that oh, yes. you know they are working they're preparing they're storing up their energy to get ready for that blooming season and spring yeah. and that's that's how i look at this i'm like i used to get worried about it but now i'm just like oh i'm in a hibernation period i'm going to embrace this and i'm going to be real excited about what's going to come from this i've learned um that that's a really beautiful time Awesome, awesome. Um, let's go to the comments for a little bit and then we can wrap up. Yeah. Whitney just loves what you said. She says, find or create beauty where you are. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And it's important to me it's where you are. It was important to say that because I didn't want people to have to drive in their car and go somewhere you can find it right outside your door, wherever you are. If you're inner city, if you're, you don't think there's much to see, there is, there's always something beautiful to find, even in your own kitchen. I mean, there's just so many places beauty is hiding. Yes, <laughs> yes you don't even have to go outside. Um, wow. I've been guilty of taking photographs in the um, market section of the veg vegetables like when there's little <laughs> water drops on the vegetables yes. like i'm a weirdo taking pictures of it of the broccoli <laughs> no it's not weird it's beautiful there's beauty like you say um everywhere Ileana says hey i just left lorraine ohio and we have a partner daily daisy solar daisy is also one of my friends she's awesome she lives in lorraine ohio um oh, yeah. and Ileana is inviting you to connect with, with her and Daisy. Um, they'd love to connect. Yes, they are. And by the way, Ileana, Ileana is definitely someone you want to connect with because um, she works with, she, she provides education to underprivileged areas. Mm. Um, and this is adult education. And I know that you teach. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe, I don't know, maybe there's this there's, there's alignment there somewhere. So yeah, definitely maybe. connect connect with Ileana. Um I would love that. She is her her company is called Aha. Like A H A with an exclamation mark. I love that. Yeah. We spoke about because um, I've taught as well, and the 
the my favorite favorite moment when I'm teaching somebody is when they have that aha moment where you see that the penny drops and they finally understand the concept. That um, is so key because yes, now they own that. That's empowerment. Yeah. That you only facilitated it. You brought them yes. to that that moment, and they had to have that. And now that is a turning point for them. Um, I actually teach, I have a side business called um, Artnology where we go into um, companies, corporate companies or, you know, where, whoever, whoever needs it, whoever asks us to help them do some team building. And what we do actually is they think they're going to do some fun art thingies. You know, we're going to just mess with some art and they, they're kind of pompous about it. They're like, we're busy. We have things to do here. We're executives and we don't have time for playtime here, crafts, okay? <laughs> the wonderful thing, and, and they also come and say, I am not an artist, I don't know about this. I don't, you know, and they're actually agitated and frustrated. And I love these people because they're the, yes. they're the ones that are the ripest and waiting for this big turning point. And it does happen and before they realize it, because what I take them through is a series of sequence of activities where it's really not about painting at all, it's about discovering things about themselves and each other. And at the end of it all, I mean, I put them in uncomfortable, uncomfortable positions for, I mean, like, you know, activities for a purpose and they get that aha moment at the end. And they're like, Oh my gosh, this was not about painting. <laughs> and it, it's, <laughs> it's, so I love the name of your company, Eliana, because that is the most important moment is that aha and it changes things for people. So yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. I love that. Um, Laura says, space to listen is powerful. A core value for me and for down and dirty networking is talk less, question more. Who is that on your left? This is Wonderloaf. <laughs> <laughs> he found me. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, he's so loving. Oh, <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. <laughs> and Whitney says that's what I love about networking too, hearing other people's stories. Yes, the same with me. Like I just want to hear. Like I don't have to talk about myself. I just want to hear. You know what? What? So when I usually when I'm um so I went to a networking event yesterday, uh, online, hmm. and um. We were put into breakout rooms. I, I make the other people talk first because I want to hear their stories first. And then if we have time, I'll speak. But I really enjoy that. That's that's what what makes um makes it the best for me. Um Laura says, I agree, curiosity creates magic and an introvert's best friend. Ooh. Right on. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Laura says, yay, Inga. High fives. I'm taking bold action. Oh, my gosh. Let's talk next week. Because <laughs> um, we were talking about this on another show. You know, I'm actually, I'm an ambivert. Mm. Um, and I, I was, actually, I watched, somebody sent me a video the other day, and they said, uh, in the video, someone explains, like, yes, I'm an extrovert, but I'm an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they need, you know, like, yes, I'm so excited to go out, but when I get there, I'm like, oh, I should have stayed home. <laughs> or, you know, you, you feel your energy just depletes sometimes, right? And you just, you're, you're all socialed out within half an hour. And that happens to me sometimes. Um, I love being around people and I love, I love the people that are in my circle. But there are times when I just feel like, oh, I need to just exhale. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so Laura says, I love that hibernation concept. Yes, me too. Ileana says she loves it. And Laura says, oh, sweet puppy kisses. <laughs> Um, so Leanne, what are your, what are your final thoughts for, for everyone that's tuned in? Um, I think 
just remembering that you're not in this alone. This is not a solo gig, you know, uh, going from logistics into the world of art was a really weird transition for many reasons. But one is that, you know, it's called solo artist, you know, and it's not, there's no such thing. Like there's, there's jurors, there's other creators, there's, um, people who curate, there are people who sponsor you, there are people who buy your things, there's people who connect with what you're doing, they just view it, you know, yeah. there's so much interaction point. And, um, but that's, that's the really, that's how life is. It's, it's just sometimes we think it's a solo gig, but it's really not. And you got to look around yeah. and find those people because in, in the end, relationships are the most, most important thing. And uh, without that, you really, you don't have much, you know, so focusing in on how you treat people and how, how um, those connections you make, that's the, that's the most important part. Yes, absolutely. It is the most important. Um, I want to tell you, there's one of my quotes, I want to just find it so I can post it for you so you can see. Um, I think I don't have it here, but, you know, I often say this, and this is, um, this is an, it's an African proverb, and it says, no man is an island. Yeah. You know, um, it's so important because we need to remember that there's always, always, always people in our corner even if we don't know, they are. Yep. They are. And here's another one I want to post. Um, another African problem says, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go with others. Mm. That's a good one. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know we need to go, but... Where can people find you? And I also, I would like you to share about what you're doing in, is it in your neighborhood with the little, the little canvases? Oh gosh, that was a while ago. That was a, a art box last month. Um, mm -hmm. But that was a really interesting um, little project. Mm -hmm. So, um, there was this, these little library boxes that people could, you know, like it was, I don't know if you do that where you're at, but leave a book and take a book. There's these little boxes where you can just, they're free. Well, the concept was put art in one of these, in these boxes. So me and like seven other artists had these little boxes where people could just come and view the art or take the art. And it had to be smaller works that would fit into the box, which was different for me because I obviously create on a very large scale. So it was a challenge to create small works so that was good but it was just neat because people could connect and come get the art and take it home and a people a couple people reached out and said how it really affected them they just couldn't believe they could get free art and just take it home they were kind of not sure what to do about that but it was a really neat connection point with yeah. human interaction um so that, that was, was cool. beautiful uh, the best place to find me these days, I do not do a good job keeping my website up right now. Again, it's just uh, another it's hat. Yes, it's, it's a hat I can't wear right now. But um, so I do update my Instagram, which is leeannlander.art okay. um, on Instagram. So one day... I'll probably have to employ one of my people from my network to help me with my network, my web page, <laughs> just to do it. <laughs> and that's what I do. I like to leverage. That's the other last thing I want to say is uh, wherever you get stuck, if you're holding yourself back, leverage your people in your network. They will help you. Like I recently published a book in December. It's a children's book. I, I had that story written like 15 years ago and I thought I was going to, like be the one to uh, illustrate it and, and do all the things. Well, I was in my own way. And so I reached out to someone else. She illustrated it for me and we got it done. We published it last, last year, but awesome. 
it's, you know, don't get stuck and feel like you're alone. Ask for help. <laughs> yes, you're so right. There is uh, Leanne's um, Instagram handle scrolling across your screen. So if you'd like to connect with her, please do so there. Um, Laura says, I mean, sorry, Whitney says, what a beautiful idea. I thought so too. As soon as, as soon as um, Leanne told me about it, I thought that is pretty cool actually um, to have those art boxes because I know in my neighborhood, we have a, a box where we exchange books. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, yeah. But yes, definitely art in a box. Why not? Yeah. And Laura agrees. She says, what a cool project. So thank you, Leanne, for taking time out to be here with me and my peeps. Well, thank um, you so much for the opportunity to meet everybody. It's my pleasure. I'm glad. Make sure that uh, if you're in the comments and you haven't connected with Leanne or each other, please do so. Um, you're messing out if you haven't. Leanne, won't you please wait for me in the green room as I wrap up? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And if you're still watching, thank you so much for spending this morning with me and with Leanne. It was awesome to introduce her to you and for you guys to learn a little bit about who she is and what she does. Um, as always, I'm wishing you a wonderful rest of your Friday and an awesome weekend. Until next time, take care, be blessed, and I'll see you soon. Ciao for now, everyone.